Lateral Approach Total Hip Replacement. Today we are going to be covering some of the important things that you should know before you have your hip replacement surgery, such as the anatomy of the hip, the surgical procedure, how to prepare for surgery, what to expect during your hospital stay, preliminary exercises, and the equipment you will need after surgery. Your hip is a ball and socket joint where the femur, or ball, meets the pelvis, or socket. This joint is surrounded by cartilage, muscles, and ligaments that allow it to move smoothly. The cartilage is a smooth, shock-absorbing layer that covers the bones and allows the ball to glide easily inside the socket. In a damaged hip, the worn cartilage no longer serves as a cushion and exposes the underlying bone. This causes roughening of the bones and they rub together like sandpaper. The ball grinds in the socket when you move your leg, causing pain and stiffness. The affected leg may become shortened, muscles may become weaker, and a limp may develop. A total hip replacement replaces the damaged part of your hip with a metal and plastic implant. The goal of the surgery is to increase your function and your hip range of motion, improve your quality of life, and decrease your pain. It can take up to a full year to recover from joint replacement surgery. Before surgery, there are many things you can do to help you prepare and ensure a positive outcome. Patient Reported Outcome Measures The PROMS asks about your level of pain, your functional status, how well you manage daily life, your overall quality of life, and your orthopedic care. You will be asked to complete the survey one month before surgery, three months, and one year after surgery. You will need your health card to complete it. If you are registered with Seamless MD, you will receive a reminder when you need to complete it. Your input will help improve the patient experience. Seamless MD is an interactive step-by-step -step guide to help you prepare for your procedure and help you to recover more quickly after. It can be accessed by you and or a care partner by smartphone, tablet, or computer. It gives you the opportunity to stay connected with your healthcare team before and after surgery. A member of our healthcare team will reach out to you by phone if they have not already and obtain an email to sign you up and give you access to these benefits. Seamless MD will guide you through three stages of your surgery, before your procedure, in hospital, and back at home. The app will facilitate communication with and enable remote monitoring of patients by the orthopedic nurse practitioner, working as an extension of the orthopedic surgeons. Let's talk about some of the preparation you can do before surgery to make your recovery easier. Arrange a care partner. Prepare a list of medications medical conditions and allergies. Get in shape for your surgery. Plan a ride home from the hospital one to two days after surgery. Get your home ready. Pack for your hospital stay. Get your equipment in place. You should begin physical therapy within two to three weeks after discharge from the hospital. Book this appointment before your surgery. Preparing your home for recovery after surgery can help prevent accidents and increase your independence. Prepare two weeks' worth of meals. Move commonly used items to counter height. Arrange animal care, snow removal, and yard maintenance. Remove tripping hazards, loose cords, throw rugs, clutter. Set up your recovery area. Cell phone. Kleenex. Book. Pain medication. Install light fixtures or floodlights to illuminate entrances, steps, and walkways. Install railings on your stairs. Pre admission visit. Your pre admission appointment is scheduled up to three weeks before surgery. There are four locations for this appointment. When you get an appointment, the scheduler will let you know which location you are attending. If you cannot go in person, you will get a telemedicine appointment through the Ontario Telemedicine Network. This appointment may last two to six hours. You will learn how to prepare for your procedure, what medicine you need to start or stop before your procedure, about using a chlorhexidine soap, 
and any tests you need to do before surgery. You will be able to attend a pre-op rehabilitation class if you live near Thunder Bay, Dryden, and Kenora. To prepare for this appointment, you should bring a list of all your medicines, vitamins, supplements, and herbal products. Bring a list of all your health issues and allergies, past surgeries, and any questions you may have. Do not bring anyone to this appointment with you. If you need to bring someone, call your healthcare team before your appointment. You can eat, drink, and take your normal medicines before this appointment. If your nurse gave you special instructions, follow theirs instead. Take a shower or bath the night before and wash the leg you are having surgery on with the chlorhexidine sponge or antimicrobial soap. Do not shave the area of the surgery. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight the night before surgery. You may drink clear fluids until 6 a.m. the day of your surgery. Examples of clear fluids include coffee or tea, no cream, milk, or sugar, water, and Gatorade. Do not wear any makeup, lipstick, nail polish, or body piercing items. Pack your hospital bag, a pair of comfortable, well-fitted shoes with non-skid soles, shorts or loose-fitting jogging pants, walker, canes, or crutches with your name label on it, copies of your insurance cards, health card, status card, advanced medical directives, and medical history. A list of any medications you regularly take. Leave your cash, credit cards, and jewelry at home. Wash the operative leg with the chlorhexidine sponge or antimicrobial soap before coming to the hospital. You will be prepared for surgery in the surgical day care unit. The nurse will assess and review your preparation. Before surgery, the nurse will start IV antibiotics to prevent infection. Refer to Seamless MD or your Total Hip Replacement Education Booklet for more details. There are precautions that you will have to follow for three months after surgery. They are in place to prevent your new hip from dislocating before the muscles have a chance to heal. Your surgeon will notify you if you can remove these precautions at your follow-up visit. You will want to avoid bending your hip past 90 degrees. Common daily tasks that involve bending past 90 degrees include sitting in a low chair, bending over to tie shoes, standing up from a chair without stretching the operated leg out in front of you first, or bringing your knee to the chest. You will also want to avoid twisting your leg in or out. When sitting or walking, avoid twisting at the hips. When doing your exercises, keep your toes pointing forward. You will want to avoid crossing your legs in sitting and lying positions. To ensure no crossing when lying, place a pillow between your knees as shown. Your hospital stay. Once you have completed your surgery, you will be admitted to the hospital. On the first day, a member of the healthcare team will visit you and get you started on a few tasks. You will be shown how to do breathing exercises and ankle pumps. These two exercises are particularly important to decrease your risk of developing a blood clot after surgery. They will also help you sit up at your bedside and practice moving with your walking device. Early mobility and exercise is key for a good outcome after total hip replacement surgery. It is not recommended to get up on your own as you will feel weak and drowsy and you will risk falling. On the first and second day of surgery, you will be expected to do everything you will need to do at home with the assistance of your walker. A member of the healthcare team will help you practice all your transfers, help you sit up for all your meals, show you the exercises that you will need to complete, help you walk with your walker without assistance, practice stairs, and ensure that you are able to complete all your activities of daily living. Most individuals are being discharged from hospital on post-op day one. After you are sent home, you will be responsible for caring for your incision. 
you will need to keep the wound clean and dry. Try not to get the incision wet until 24 hours after you have the staples removed, 12 to 14 days after the surgery. You can shower after your surgery as the dressing is waterproof. The dressing is not waterproof if there's blood leaking from the sides. In this case, replace the bandage before showering. Seven days after your surgery, you will need to remove the dressing and replace it with a waterproof bandage. It should stay on for another seven days until your first follow-up visit, usually on your telemedicine or fracture clinic appointment around day 14. You will also have to watch for signs of infection. These include increased redness and warmth around the incision, swelling or puffiness, drainage from the incision, increased pain, and a fever higher than 38.5 degrees Celsius. If you have any of these signs, tell your surgeon or doctor right away. If you are registered with Seamless MD, contact the nurse practitioner if you have any concerns about your incision. You have a few appointments to attend after discharge from the hospital. Your first follow-up appointment is 12 to 14 days after surgery. This appointment may be done in fracture clinic, specialty clinics, or by telehealth. You may be seen by the surgeon or the advanced practice physiotherapist. At this time, a member of the healthcare team will remove your staples. Additional follow-up appointments are determined by your surgeon. Your outpatient physiotherapy assessment should be booked for two to three weeks after your procedure. You should have this booked before your surgery. Will I have pain after surgery? Your surgical pain will initially be more intense than the pain that you had prior to your surgery. Your bone and muscles were cut to insert the components of your hip or knee replacement. It is often worse several days after surgery as swelling of the tissue is at its worst then. Swelling is a normal side effect following surgery. Swelling after surgery can be managed with rest, ice, elevation, and gradual return to activities. Ankle pump exercises may also help with swelling post-surgery. It is normal to have some swelling after exercise or doing your therapeutic exercise program. It is also normal to have lower extremity swelling after surgery. However, if you have sudden shortness of breath, sharp chest pain that is worse with a deep breath or cough, redness in your leg or surgical site, a sudden onset of calf pain, this may represent a venous thromboembolism or leg clot. You should go to your closest emergency department or call 911 and be taken immediately to the emergency room. It is safe to walk after surgery, but let pain and swelling be your guide. You have to gradually increase your activity tolerance. It is important not to substitute walking for your therapeutic home exercise program as prescribed by your rehabilitation team. These exercises are important to increase your strength, range of motion, and balance. Remember, Full recovery for a hip or knee replacement takes up to one year. These are the preliminary exercises that you can do before your surgery and immediately after. They will be progressed by your physiotherapist when you attend your physiotherapy sessions. Ankle pumps. Slowly move your ankle up and down. Do this as often as you can or 50 times every hour. Deep breathing and cough. Take 10 deep breaths followed by a cough. Do this every hour that you are awake. Make this part of your daily routine until you are up and moving well. Buttock contractions. Tighten your buttock muscles and hold for a count of five. Static quadriceps strength. Tighten the muscles on the front of your operated thigh into the bed. Hold for five seconds. 
Hip and Knee Bending Lying semi-reclined in bed or on a couch, put a towel, sheet, or rope under your foot. Pull the towel, sheet, or rope to bend your operated knee. Hold for 5 seconds. Repeat 10 to 20 times. Quad over roll. With a roll under your knee, straighten your knee by tightening your thigh muscles. Hold for 5 seconds. Supine hip abduction. Slide the operated leg sideways in bed, keeping your leg pressed on the bed. Keep the kneecap and toes pointing up and towards the ceiling. Always keep legs apart. Hold for five seconds. Bridge. Bend both knees up with your feet flat on the bed. Push through your feet and lift your buttocks slightly off the bed. Keep your abdominal muscles tight to avoid arching your lower back. Hold for five seconds. Repeat 10 to 20 times, two to three times a day. Standing hip flexion. Stand with support for balance. Bend your operated hip by bringing your knee toward your chest. Hold for five seconds. Slowly lower your leg. Standing hip abduction. Stand with support for balance. Lift your operated leg out to the side while standing tall. Hold for five seconds. Slowly lower your leg. Repeat 10 to 20 times, two to three times a day. Standing hip extension. Stand with support for balance. Lift your operated leg backwards, keeping your knees straight. Keep your hips level and stand tall. Hold for five seconds. Slowly lower your leg. Repeat 10 to 20 times, two to three times a day. Complete all exercises 10 to 20 times, three to four times per day. Hold each exercise for five seconds. Ice your hip 15 to 20 minutes every one to two hours. When icing, make sure to put a pillowcase between your skin and the ice to prevent burning or frostbite of the skin. Take your pain medication prior to physiotherapy or your home exercise program. To set up your home safely for your recovery, we recommend that you have some equipment. A long-handled shoehorn, a long reacher sponge, a reacher, and a sock aid will allow you to put on your socks and shoes and grab things off the floor without reaching too far forward. If you borrow a walker from a friend, make sure that it is the correct height for you. You can do this by standing tall, keeping your arms at your sides, and ensuring that the walker handle is the same height as your wrist or where your watch should be. There are resources online at rjac.ca and with SeamlessMD if you are registered. If you still have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your surgeon's office, the Regional Joint Assessment Centre in Thunder Bay, or your pre-admission clinic for further assistance.